What's going on everybody? It's your boy, Jonathan Evans. Welcome to the YouTube channel. We're excited that you're here. Listen, today's gonna be a good one. We're talking about what you should look for. Let's get into it. All right, listen, there's a lot of single people out there that are looking for a mate. They're looking for who God has for them. They're observing, they're looking at people and trying to figure out, is this the one or not? But there's some things that you should look for in a mate and it describes it in Genesis 2. And so I'm gonna jump right in. I'm not gonna take too much time with this. I just want you to hear this share this and use this because it's going to be helpful in your life. In Genesis 2:15, it says, "Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it." The word put there is not talking about location. In Genesis 2:8, it says that uh, the Lord placed the man in the garden. So he says in Genesis 2:8, "I placed him in the garden." In Genesis 2:15, he put him in the garden. To put him in the garden means he was put in the presence of God. Where God is, he is there also. And so it shows that before a woman ever shows up, you have a man who was in God's presence. A lot of women these days are trying to use their gift, skills, talents, and mouth to try to put the guy in God's presence. Like, dude, can you go to church? Can you get some accountability? Like they're, they're, they're hoping that when they get married to him, he will change. No, he needs to be already changed before you get married. I need you to understand that he needs to be in the presence of God because Adam was a man who was in the presence of God and he wasn't put there by Eve. He was put there by God. Listen to me when I tell you this, ladies. If God's word can't change him, don't think that your word can change him. I, I'm gonna need you to hear that. If, if God's word, men have the ego thing, need respect and all of those different things. If, if they're rejecting God's word, they will reject your word. And a lot of women are driving themselves crazy today, trying to get a man to be something that he's not, to be in a position um, that God himself can't even put him in because the man is rejecting uh, God and God's influence on his life. So ladies, you want to save yourself some headache and some time. You want to observe that this man on his own, apart from you, is in the presence of God. You want to observe that this man on his own, without you being around or saying a word, is a part of a community, a part of accountability, a part of a church, a, a, a part of the presence of God. And you can observe that by number two. So number one is, is he in the presence of God? Number two is, is he serving the purposes of God? He can be in a certain place, but his life not connect to the place that he's in. You know what I mean? Right here it says that Adam was put in the garden. He was in the presence of God to cultivate it and keep it. In other words, he was doing what God had called him to do in the presence of God that God put him to be. So you want to watch his life. You actually want to observe, are the outcomes matching the things that he's saying? Or are the things that are coming out matching the things that are going in? I want to make sure that when I look at, and it's not a stalking thing, it's not a stalking thing, but when you're looking at, you know, you're interested in somebody, today's interest, they look on, you know, their social medias, they look on uh, what they're doing in public, they look on how they speak, they, they think about how they operate and how they um, actually betray them, put themselves out there. Um, to really get the reality because what you do should speak so loud that I don't need to hear what you say. A lot of women get caught up in the words of a man, but they need to really look at the actions of a man. Do the actions of the man match up with the word from the man? And here you have as a man in God's presence who is serving God's purposes. And so what he's doing with his life is connected to the kingdom. Listen, if you're interested in a man who's going to be the leader of your household, a spiritual leader, as Ephesians 5 says, washing her with the word and you not having to be the one that's opening the Bible and teaching the kids all the time and praying for them at night while he's off doing something else. You want to know that before you even get go there, that you're observing someone who is in the presence of God, who's actively serving the purposes of God in whatever area of life uh, he's called uh, to do what he does. And so you want the outcomes to match what's actually coming out of his mouth. And then the third thing that I would tell you, ladies, is that you want to know that not only does he have God's pre presence, not only is he serving God's purposes, but he's in God's premises. Okay, so I've got the P's here. You know, preachers always got to do a P or an R or something. So I've got that. It's the presence. He's in God's presence. Okay. He's serving God's purposes. I see what he's doing, but then he's also in God's premise. Here's another thing that'll drive you crazy. A man that ain't got no boundaries. You see, because God tells Adam from every tree of the garden, you may freely eat, except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God gave boundaries. 
And so Adam was operating within the boundaries or the premises that God had set. Does this man have boundaries for his life? Because if he doesn't have boundaries that are based on the purpose and the presence, then you and your relationship will get caught doing things that are outside of God's will, which will not produce God's outcomes. And you don't want to have to set those boundaries. A lot of ladies today are having to set the boundaries. Now we don't need to do this. If we're trying to live like this, we don't need to do this. We don't need to go here. We don't need to be operating like this. And a lot of ladies are trying to put the man, purpose the man and premises the man. Well, no. <laughs> if you're looking for someone who, want, who, who you want to be the, the head of the household, the leader of the family, who's going to be confident not only in God's word, but also be connected to what God is telling him to do, you need to have and observe on the onset, not perfection, but on the onset, you need to observe a presence, a purpose, and a premises that this man has for his own life before Eve ever shows up. So that's why we talked about observing before you go in, before you go ahead and jump into this thing. These are things that you want to observe. So that's three things really quickly uh, for the ladies. Of course, there's a lot more there uh, to be said, but just remember presence, purpose, premises. Does he have boundaries? Is he serving the purposes of God? Is he in God's presence? Because I don't want to have to be the one to put him there. All right, guys, it's your turn. Three things that you look for in a woman. You look for these things in a woman because, listen, this will carry you a long way. And this is things that you want to observe. Things that you want to observe. Let's read a little bit about what it talks about. In Genesis 2.18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And I want you to see that in verse 22, it says the Lord God fashioned a woman uh, from the rib of a man and he brought her to the man. So the first thing, which is similar to the first thing for a man, is she's his. She's his. Which, what does that mean? She's God's. She's a woman of the garden. God didn't bring Eve outside of the garden. God brought Eve in the garden. So the first thing is being equally yoked. I want to know, is she a woman of the garden? I want to know, is she his? I want to know, not only am I in God's presence, but is she in God's presence? Is she willing to come with me on the ride of the purpose and abide by the same boundaries? Because what I don't need is a competitor. I'm looking for a helper. I don't need somebody to compete with me in the garden because God has given me a purpose in this garden. And so I'm not trying to be with a woman who's outside the garden because how can someone help you with a garden she ain't in? I'm going to need her to be in this garden in the presence of God operating under the authority of God so that I'm trying to be a husband the way God is calling me to be. But I'm not competing with a woman who's not trying to be a wife the way God is calling her to be because that leads to point number two. So she's in the garden, she's his. And it also leads to point number two, she's a helper. It says that I'm gonna make a helper suitable for him. And I, I, decide, I was trying to decide between helper and healer, but helper is someone who's not a competitor. Oh, a man is not interested in a warrior, he's interested in a wife. He's interested in a helpmate, someone who's going to come alongside to him and not pull him back from God's purposes, but advance God's purposes. And so you're looking for somebody who is a helper, not a competitor, who's a, who's a wife, not a warrior. You're looking for someone who doesn't share your attributes, but has opposite attributes. Listen, in 1 Peter 3, it says the woman has a gentle and quiet spirit, not a quiet mouth, but a gentle and quiet spirit. Let me tell you the power that that has for men. Um, my daughters have me wrapped. I'm going to just tell you, my daughters have me wrapped. My sons don't have me wrapped. Now, I love them the same, but my daughters are able to wrap me in a way that my sons are not able to wrap me. So I need you to understand this healer or helper concept of the woman is that my daughters are able to have me wrapped in a, son, in a way my sons don't. Well, why? Why is it that daughters can wrap a man, but a son can't wrap a man? Well, it's different. Daughters are totally different. They're more gentle, they're more soft, they're more sweet. They're different than boys. Boys are clunky and dense. And I just feel like my daughters need me at a di in a different way than my sons. And my wife always looks at me like this. Them boys, them, them girls got you wrapped. And they, they do have me wrapped. But let me help you understand something. My wife has me wrapped. Kanika will tell you all the time, I got you wrapped. And why does she have me wrapped? Because... She's not my competitor. She's a helper. She's not a warrior. She's a wife. 
she's she is the adult version of the same reasons my daughters have me wrapped. She's gentle with me. She's soft with me. She's sweet with me. She's trying to help me, not compete with me. She, the way she talks to me, the way she respects me, the way she helps aid me, the way she operates with me has the ability to change my whole situation. That's why it tells you in 1 Peter 3, a gentle and quiet spirit is actually what will change a man by the example that you set, by the attitude in which you come into the garden, not to compete with you or to go to war with you, but to help you and try to accentuate what God has already given. And so you wanna understand men, when you look at her uh, countenance, when you look at her attitude, when you watch her speak, when you watch her with her family or with her friends, that she is a, a sweet spirit. She is a, a someone in the garden who you feel like can come alongside and not go to war with you, but be a wife to you. Because that is something that God created the woman to do right here in Genesis 2, is to help aid in the garden that he had already created. So he's, she's his, she's a helper or a healer, but she's a good gardener. She understands how to harvest. So let me make this point. She's his. She's a helper, okay, or a healer. Now, why do I say healer? Because she was taken from the rib of a man. God took the rib of a man, okay? So let me stay on point two for a second. God took the rib of a man and made a woman. So when the woman comes to you, she's your rib. What does a rib do? It protects vital organs. It protects the heart, it protects the lungs, it protects the liver, it, pro it protects everything in here from being harmed. This woman protects the vital organs of a man. What are those vital organs? Respect, trust, honor. These are vital organs of a man. And in Proverbs 31, it says the heart of her husband trust her. That's a vital organ of a man. In Ephesians 5, it says the man needs respect right at the end of the chapter. That's the vital organ of a man. When it comes to those things, she is the rib to him. She's not competing with him or jabbing him or going to war with him. She's the rib that he lost coming back to him to protect the vital organs of him. Ooh, I'm feeling that right now. I, we don't need some of that. So she's his, she's the helper or healer because she's the rib and she knows how to harvest, okay? This is the third thing that you want to see as a man is she knows how to harvest. Why is that important? Why am I speaking in garden terms? Because she's in the garden. And Adam was called to cultivate. Adam was called to keep the garden. And so she comes in and she knows how to sow and reap. She knows how to plant. She knows how to accentuate the purposes of God. She's smart. She's intelligent. She brings more to you than what you could ever accomplish on your own. Now you've got a purpose. You've got a plan. You've got dreams. You've got things you want to accomplish. But when this woman shows up, you're looking at her and saying that the value add of her takes the garden that God has given me and makes it way more plush than it could ever be without her because she understands how to use her gifts, talents to take the rule that God has given them to a whole nother level. So she's smart, she's intelligent, she's got things that she brings to the table that aid in the advancement of God's kingdom. Okay, so for the ladies, he's in God's presence, he's serving God's purpose, he's in God's premises, that sets him up to be a good leader and sets him up to be a good husband because he's under the authority of God. And for the men, she's his, she's not out of the garden trying to help you with the garden, you're, you're equally yoked. She's a helper or healer, she's not a competitor or a warrior, she's gonna protect the vital organs and she's a harvester. She knows how to come in and make better what God has already given, all right? We got it. Listen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, become a part of the team. Let's continue to grow together. Let's go. What up, everybody? We just learned three things that we can both look for that are important foundational things to build a house that last. Listen, you want to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, share this video. If it needs to be a blessing to people, it will be a blessing to people as we observe what God wants to bring into our lives and do things the right way. Listen, can't wait till next time. Let's go.